Welcome to Donington Park for the final round of the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. Luke Herbert, championship leader, starts at the front of the grid for the first of this weekend's races, while his main championship contender starts way back there on row four. It's over to Andy McEwen to take you through the rest of the grid. Thanks, Lord. Yes, it's all about Luke Herbert and Tom Roach this weekend. Just 12 points separate them with three races remaining here at Donington Park. It is all still to play for. Liam Murphy and Jack Harding are also dicing away uh, for third place in points. They're very close together indeed too, so uh, that's another battle to keep an eye on over the course of the weekend. Well, it's neither of the championship contenders who have the pole position. It is Jack Harding who's taken the final pole of the year, but only just ahead of Luke Herbert alongside him. Johnny Greensmith and Liam Murphy make up break two. Ben Short and Tom Collins on the third row with James Blake Baldwin and Tom Roach, the championship contender on the fourth row. Row five and Brian Chandler and Carl Garner ahead of Richard Freeland and Jake Bailey, row six, row seven for Richard Wicklin and Nick Dunn with Alec Livesley and Simon Goddard down on row eight. Ninth row for Gary Townsend and Simon Baldwin, Simon Orange and Clive Powell round out the top 20, then it's William Sharp and a returning Patrick Collins ahead of George Grant and Gary Crook on row 12. Row 13 for Jeff Gurrier and Steve Dolman, Darren Stapleton and Alex King on row 14, Alex Miller, Simon Fleet and the rest file in behind. All the way down to the 36th position for Sam Tatler, another capacity entry here at Donington Park. So Jack Harding has the pole, but Luke Herbert is looking for a solid three races here at Donington Park to wrap up his first Master MX-5 Super Cup title. The red lights go on, they go out. Now we're away in racing here at Donington Park. Watch for the green car of Tom Roach to try and make progress as soon as possible from eighth on the grid. But at the front of the field, it is wheel to wheel. Jack Harding on the left, on the right is Luke Herbert, who's bravest on the brakes. You put your money on Harding on the inside line and with nothing to lose. Also charging through there is James Blake Baldwin up the inside of Ben Short. There's Tom Roach in the green car, risking getting hung out to dry Redgate corner, but he survives intact. One or two out on the grass further back. They're all through, I think, without contact. So it's Harding from Herbert leading the way. Greensmith is there in third. Liam Murphy is fourth, with Blake Baldwin in fifth. Sixth place, Ben Short, and seventh for Tom Roach. So he's already picked up one position, but it's crucial here that he gets away with the leaders. Donington Park will keep the field very, very close together indeed. The slipstream effect here is very profound, and uh, if you lose the toe to the leading group, that could be your chance of a race wing gone up the road there we can see that Tom Roach is making another move now he's into sixth place ahead of Ben Short so he's already making decent forward progress we're on board here with the um, 176 car of Brian Chandler turning his way up in towards Coppice Corner for the first time of asking over the crest of the hill the car goes light wants to run out wide to the edge of the road but he gathers it all together nicely leaders down the back straight for the first time hand out of the cockpit there for Luke Herbert signalling to somebody but he's not attacking for the lead is he? he's going to sit right in line behind the race leader Jack Harding as they turn their way through the chicane for the first time a sideways Brian Chandler there's lots of jostling going on further back that was Simon Goddard getting nerfed in the tail as he turned in here's some battling going on a bit further back as well Darren Stapleton there in the number 44 car and that number 10 is William Sharp losing a position as at the head of the field the first challenge for the race lead there for Luke Herbert he tried to get up the inside of uh, Jack Harding it didn't quite work out I'd say this is more or less though a nine car breakaway at the moment which includes both of our championship contenders second place for Herbert sixth place for Roach at the moment and it's Roach who has the deficit he has to start beating Herbert uh, in this race he really has to beat Herbert in all three races this weekend to have any hope of taking the title out of the old hairpin they go then for the second time up towards McLean's they go I don't think that Roach just picked another place up didn't he may well be inside the top five now let's check yes ahead of Liam Murphy as Luke Herbert makes a bit of a mistake there and almost opened the door for Johnny Greensmith he blocks him that holds them both up and allows the number one car the outgoing champion James Blake Baldwin to very briefly draw alongside he couldn't quite make the move stick has that opened the door maybe for his nemesis of 12 months ago Tom Roach to attack not quite back down the exhibition straight we come in fact Liam Murphy is coming back at Tom Roach now which yeah, is not the what the number 25 it. car needed on the brakes they turn right and Roach just about gets across in front of the number three machine of Liam Murphy who can see his hopes of third place in the championship slipping away slightly with his uh, big rival for that position Jack Harding out in the lead of the race and I would say just about starting to make a bit, of a bit of a break as they're all fighting for position behind him. They're holding each other up and allowing the leader to pull away. So it's now a four-way fight for second. And you can see there that it's headed by Luke Herbert. It is tailed by Tom Roach. And in the middle, squabbling over third place, Johnny Greensmith and James Blake Baldwin almost side by side as they came down through the Craner curves this time. Not quite the challenge made, though, by Blake Baldwin. 
of course, he needs to be careful. If he goes for a move and it doesn't work, he could end up losing that position to the fired up Blendini machine of Tom Roach behind him. So back out of the old hairpin, up towards Schwantz Curve and McLean's. And can Harding break the toe? Can he pull away? He's got a couple of car lengths advantage over this little group behind, but they've started to regroup and are maybe reeling him back in again. So uh, it may well be that that little bit of uh, uh, comfort margin that Jack Harding had built up will be short-lived, because I think by the time they arrived at the back down which came this time, they'll be right back with him over the hump, down into the braking zone, and yes, Luke Herbert is there with him now. Does he have a goal on the brakes? Harding thinks he might, so he moves across to cover. That will just further delay the pack behind and mean that they get even more congested coming back out onto the pit straight. So they're all back together again now, certainly six for the lead, and very nearly the Ben Short group is back with them as well. Across the line we go. Here comes Blake Baldwin up the inside of Johnny Greensmith. This is for third position. Hard on the brakes. Does he make the move stick? I think he did. Can Tom Roach take advantage? He tried to, but Greensmith is a, a, a wise racer. He knew to shut the door there and stop the switchback manoeuvre. And in fact, it is Roach who could lose a place because Liam Murphy is alongside him. This is not what the championship contender needed. Side by side for third, side by side for fifth as well through the grainer curve. This is brave stuff. Liam Murphy risks any hung out to drive, but he stands his ground. Brilliant stuff from Murphy. Back up the inside of the old hairpin, he moves back through, and now it's Ben Short who moves onto the tail of Tom Roach as they go through Starkey's, up towards McLean's they go, oh, Liam Murphy out wide though, and off into the gravel trap, Liam Murphy throwing away positions, he could not afford that, uh, he has lost his chance now of finishing on the podium in this race, you would suggest, but more importantly, with Jack Harding out in the lead of the race at the moment, he could lose third place in the championship. Ryan Chandler, meanwhile, is up the inside of Tom Collins as we go down the exhibition straight. That is for now seventh position with Liam Murphy's demise as Luke Herbert oh, had a think up the inside there of uh, Jack Harding. It's refreshing to see that Luke Herbert is very much still racing here, isn't he? Realistically, three solid finishes this weekend will give him the championship, but he still wants to win the races if at all possible. It may have cost him second place though possibly because he's now got James Blake Baldwin to his left and trying to sneak through on the inside line there was Johnny Greensmith but Herbert says not on your life he covers the line Greensmith still picks up one place though he gets into third position now ahead of the reigning champion Tom Collins is on the grass further back and loses another position as a result that was uh, Richard Breland, who's really on form here this weekend. He's just set the fastest lap of the race and he's already uh, worked his way up towards the uh, the lead group so back down through the old hairpin. They're all packed together again. Phenomenal racing this is, as it tends to be here at Donington Park. It's always one of the most exciting race meetings of the season, not just because the championship is on the line, but because it's one of those circuits that just produces very, very close racing. And in a Mazda, you can overtake pretty much any corner that takes your fancy, as we're seeing demonstrated perfectly there by James Blake Baldwin, who dives up the inside of uh, Johnny Greensmith. And that could open the floodgates, because here comes Tom Roach, here comes Ben Short. Oh, and off there goes Richard Breland. So I just said he was going well he just about gathers it back together but he loses one place to Tom Collins and he may well I think be waving Liam Murphy through there as well because he's lost so much momentum it made sense just to back off and uh, let Liam go through as well which he did so they will now try and work together the two cars who've been off in uh, the last lap or so to close back in on the leading bunch yeah, uh, who are crossing the line once more still being led by Jack Harding as they have been since the start of the race despite the immense pressure being applied by the championship leader behind him Johnny Greensmith begins his fight back up the inside of Ben Short nice move made there into Redgate corner but you're always prone to the switchback manoeuvre there if you go in a bit deep then uh, the inside line may well be available for the driver you've just overtaken that's exactly what Ben Short is doing meanwhile Brian Chandler and Tom Collins are going wheel to wheel as well through this most daunting sequence of corners but Brian Chandler does not back down from a fight easily does he and he will reclaim the position Johnny Greensmith and Ben Short are still going at it Short's back in front of him but now Johnny Greensmith trying to fight back Brian Chandler there gesticulating furiously at Tom Collins saying don't fight me work with me the more time they spend racing each other the further behind the cars in front they are falling and that's not what Brian Chandler wants so back through McLean's, there's Tom Roach, who for the first time all race is a bit lonely here, isn't he, in fourth position. He's just lost touch with the leading group slightly. Three cars in front of him, they are Harding, Herbert and James Blake Baldwin. But with Jack Harding having to drive more defensively now than he ever has done so far in this race, you sense that this could be Roach's opportunity to close back in. Hugging the white line down the back straight there is uh, Jack Harding trying to hold on to this race lead. Yeah, they fan out behind him, but the positions three. stay as they were. So 43 from 50 from one is still the order. But yes, look at that Roach, much quicker through the corner. He's back with them again. And only one car now separates the two championship contenders. And that one car is the outgoing champion, James Blake Baldwin, who is now defending his third position down towards Redgate corner. 
turn into the right-hander. Stalemate situation, really, isn't it? There, they were all driving defensively. There was no way through for any of them. Ben Short is uh, getting back into this as well. Ben's season started off really promisingly back at the start of the year, didn't it? And uh, a little bit of inconsistency through the mid part of the season has counted him out of the championship equation. But uh, he's building momentum nicely here at the end of the season. If we see him back in the championship in 2018, he will definitely be a championship contender. I think this is the black and orange number 68 car that's now at the tail end of this leading quintet. Through Schwantz and McLean's we go again. Over the curbs on the inside. That helps turn the car to the right, but not quite enough there for Luke Herbert. He just ran a bit wide. Almost opened the door on the inside for Blake Baldwin. He goes to the outside line and Tom Roach says, thank you very much. That leaves the inside line available for me. And I'm going through onto the podium positions by the looks of it. I think Roach is up the inside. He's trying to go through Greensmith and Ben Shorter side by side behind as well. Brian Chandler is still pointing and waving furiously as he tries to close in and join in the fun as well. It's Liam Murphy now behind him as they drop down into the chicane. Oh, there's contact there between Greensmith and Blake Baldwin. How on earth did Blake Baldwin save that? He's all out over the curbs. He'll delay himself and all of those behind him but he was lucky there not to be pointing completely the wrong direction they fan out now three and nearly four abreast down the pit straight but James Blake Baldwin might just hang on to fourth place here hard on the brakes into red gate corner I think he will you know Ben Short will come through in fifth yes just about and then side by side between Chandler Greensmith and then Murphy and Tom Collins also joining in the fun frantic racing then here at Donington Park in this first race of three the championship still on the line join us after the break to see what happens Welcome back to Donington Park. One lap remains in our first race of the weekend for the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. What a race it's been, but it's finally now calmed down slightly at the front of the field. Jack Harding is looking good for another race victory. Luke Herbert is in second, and Tom Roach has worked his way through into third position. So uh, at this rate, the gap between the two of them will go out by a further two points. Neither of them has the uh, fastest lap at the moment, which is worth one point. That at the moment is going the way of Richard Breeland, which has been uh, part of what has been a very exciting race for uh, Richard in this one but uh, the gap will go out by two points roughly 14 points will separate the two going into this afternoon's second and penultimate race of the weekend but Jack Harding is the man of the moment here at Donington Park remember 12 months ago when we got towards the last couple of meetings of the season it was Jack Harding who was the man to beat and this year it's no different it would seem he really comes on strong as we get towards the end of the season just a little bit of bad luck earlier on in the year has taken him out of the fight for the championship he's another one who hopefully we'll see return next year to really fight for the crown so Jack Harding makes his way through the final chicane he will see the chequered flag and he will win the first race of the weekend here at Donington Park and a brilliant drive it was as well second place though and valuable points go the way of Luke Herbert whilst Tom Roach keeps the championship alive in third fourth will just I think go the way of Ben Short but he was alongside uh, Johnny Greensmith there as they crossed the uh, start finish line to see the chequered flag plenty of battles further back as well but it was a brilliant drive there from Jack Harding, defensive drive early on in the race to hold on to the lead. Herbert second, third for Roach, fourth for Short. He just had a Blake Baldwin, in fact, then Johnny Greensmith. Then it's Brian Chandler, Liam Murphy, Jake Bailey and Carl Garnett who round out the top ten. Further back, Simon Goddard there in the 13th position. Simon Baldwin down in uh, 18th. Last few drivers have had issues, finished a bit further back than they might have liked. George Grant there, the series sponsor in uh, 29th position. We lost one or two along the way. Clyde Powells and Sam Tatler are two non-finishers. Jack lights the flag, but it didn't look easy out there. No, the first uh, five or six laps, it's so hard to get away. You know, the tour is absolutely like immense. So I just had to defend and try and hold position. I knew once it started to break up a bit, um, you know, I'd, I'd got the pace to sort of go. And luckily, Luke, you know, I had a sensible head on thinking about his championship and just sort of like didn't really attack me and just pushed me around and, you know, just sort of stayed a little bit of distance last five laps. So I, I didn't have to defend. And no, the car felt really good and, yeah, spot on. Luke, difficult race out there. Certainly the first couple of laps were, were tight. And it now moves on with the championship into the next couple of races. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we're only covered top ten. We're covered by two temps, I think, apart from Jack. You know, he was rapid in qualifying. So, um, so everyone was going to have the pace out there, and everyone's out there to win. But you know, especially Tom. Um, uh, me and Jack trying to work together at the start, but everyone was quick. Everyone was trying to have a, a go at me, and I thought if one gets through, they're all going to get through, and, and, and potentially Tom. So. Um, Held my game at the start, tried to get Jack a couple of times, so I think I had the pace on him at the start. 
And then as soon as we broke a gap and they started battling, I saw Tom, I just had to work with Jack. So uh, every straight I'm just waving at him saying, just keep going, keep going. You know, we've got a good pace and we're actually pulling away from Tom. So, you know, the, the pace looks promising for the second race. But, you know, Tom's going to be trying to win that race. But luckily, I'm in the fortunate position now. I don't have to win. But I don't want to be fall back too far through the order. Um, it would be nice to cut if, if Tom wins to come fourth and then I can wrap it up today. Tom. Absolutely unbelievable start from eighth to fifth on the first lap, and that just kind of progressed forward over the next couple of laps. Yeah, yeah, all, all right. Start. Um, I got into third, but it was always going to be difficult with, with Luke and Jack out front because they both knew, well, you know, Luke knew he didn't have to beat Jack. So um, yeah, as soon as I lost the toe to them a bit, it was uh, it was difficult. But um, third, I mean, I guess there's there's still a mathematical chance, um, but it kind of. Uh, yeah, who knows? We'll see, see what happens next race. All you need to do is make a start like you did in this race. Could be leading into the first corner or by the end of the first lap. It could be yours still. It's still there for the taking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. I have to win. Um, and then it's, uh, it's Luke's to lose. So uh, we'll see what he does. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, congratulations once again. We look forward to speaking to you later. Cheers. So race number two then, and could the championship be decided in this race? If Tom Roach can win it, then there's always a chance that it could go down to the last race. And he does start up there in third on the grid. They start this one, remember the way in which they finished race two. So it's Jack Harding from Luke Perwitt on row one, with Roach and Ben Short on the second row. James Blake Borden and Johnny Greensmith make up row three. Brian Chandler and Liam Murphy, who needs a good result here to hang on to third in the points. Remember, he starts eight. Jake Bailey and Carl Garnett round out the top ten ahead of Richard Wickland and Richard Breland. Simon Goddard and Alec Livesley are next up ahead of Tom Collins, who had it off, remember, in race one, and Nick Dunn on the eighth row. Simon Orange and Simon Balder, the two Simons together on the ninth row, with Gary Townsend and Will Sharp rounding out the top 20. It will be another capacity grid, although I say that, in the background, I can actually see one car being pushed off the grid, and that is Tom Collins. So, Tom, who was a driver, I thought we might see moving through the field after some issues in race one, unfortunately, being wheeled off the grid altogether, so he looks to be a non-starter, so... Uh, 35 cars about to take the start. It's Clyde Powell and Sam Tatler who make up the back row of the grid after their issues in the first race. So the five second board is shown. And here we go then. The championship could be about to be decided over the next 20 minutes. If Tom Roach can beat Luke Herbert, then it's all still to play for. But if Luke gets a solid result, that could be enough for him. Away we go. We're off and racing. And it's a, another evenly matched start between the two front row men, isn't it? Look, Harding on the inside and Herbert on the outside. But I doubt that Herbert will want to take too many risks here. If he can slot in line in second place, then he will do. There's Johnny Greensmith up the inside of Ben Short. Heading uh, down through Redgate Corner. Liam Murphy on the grass further back. They all get through without any argy-bargy, just about. Now, this is not Sam Tatler. This is Patrick Collins, who's in Sam Tatler's car. Some issues for Patrick's car this weekend. So he's uh, taking over Sam's machine, so this is car number 99, Patrick Collins making his way down through the uh, the Craner curves. Simon Fleet there just in front of us, there's someone in the gravel though to our right and taking a very unconventional line through the old hairpin. Now who was that? It's one of the many silver cars. It was, was that Brian Chandler? It was hard to tell initially. Uh, we'll see who's not there in the picture, but uh, uh, no, Brian Chandler's there, so it wasn't him. Someone has gone flying off the track there from that lead group. There is Brian Chandler, just ahead of Liam Murphy, so it definitely wasn't him that uh, went on the grass, but somebody with a very scary moment down through the grainer curves. Luckily, got it all gathered together and continue on their way. So, back down the exhibition straight we go, and Luke Herbert immediately is having to defend here from Tom Roach, who is in full attack mode in this race. His job is simple. Beat that blue number 50 car, and you've still got a chance for the championship. He couldn't get through there, though, so he has to settle back into third position. Back through the chicane we go. There's Simon Goddard in the other Blendini car, the silver one, working his way through. But they head now down towards Redgate Corner, and the battle is on here for third position. Look, because Tom Roach is under all sorts of pressure. He's got Johnny Greensmith and uh, James Blake Balding to his inside. To his outside is Ben Short, and he leans on him, and Ben Short out on the grass. Well, in this race of all races, Ben should have known that Tom was not going to leave many room there, and uh, he, uh, he paid the price for that opportunistic move. He ends up losing a couple of places rather than gaining any but Roach can't afford to be defending here he needs to have his eyes forward he has to get himself in front of Luke Herbert and then get as many cars between himself and Luke Herbert as possible 14 points separate them going into this race and if it doesn't come down by a significant amount in this one uh, then uh, that will uh, spell the end of Tom Roach's championship host Tom who has 
built up this reputation for being Mr. MX-5 over the last decade or so, winning multiple Mark I MX-5 championships, but he's never won a championship in a Mark III car. And uh, it looks like this year, possibly, it's not going to happen again, although there's still a way to go in this one. And Luke Herbert is not settling for second place. Look, he's attacking Jack Harding as they head down into the uh, chicane. James Blake Baldwin there losing a place to Donny Greensmith as they turn in. The rest of them throwing themselves to that chicane. It really is a, a, a nice little chicane that carried good speed through it. Oh, and off has gone Simon Goddard. He's carried too much speed through it. He's off into the tyre wall. But because you've got those foam uh, barriers protecting the, uh, the cars from the actual tyres themselves, there's actually not that much damage done. So he's been able to select reverse gear, get going again. He'll lose lots of places, but the car should be more or less in one piece. So, drama's there for Simon Goddard, who I think may have been the car we saw off on the first lap at this part of the circuit as well. So, it's been an eventful start to the race for Simon. Multiple race winner in Mark 1, Mark 1 Matter MX-5 racing himself, this Simon Goddard. Struggling a little bit to uh, achieve the same sort of glory in the Super Cup this year. Leads back through Starkey's and up towards Schwantz Curve and McLean's. And once more, the battle is joined between Jack Harding and uh, Luke Herbert. Now, we heard Luke say after race one that in the early part of that race, he felt he was a bit quicker than Jack. But then towards the end of the race, Jack Harding was able to stretch the gap, wasn't he? So they'll be working together again, I'm fairly sure. Luke will want to keep as much distance between himself and Tom Roach as possible. But uh, if he senses a chance to go through, then he may well go for it behind. Tom Roach is, again, got his mirrors full and in fact to his inside has come James, uh, Johnny Greensmith now this is not what Roach needs he's almost certainly going to lose third place he does well actually to get back in line in front of Ben Short to avoid losing another position and they come out of the chicane up across the start finish line and Tom Roach is now one place further back so as things stand Luke Herbert would wrap the championship up in this race but there is still as I keep saying a long long way to go up into Redgate Corner use as much road as possible on the way in cut right across the apex curb try and get as much traction out of the corner as possible but we all stay single file Liam Murphy there has a little look at the inside of uh, Ben Shaw but that was more I think um, to try and distract Ben than actually find a way through make the way down the crane curves and Tom Roach well, he best hope that he set that car up to come on strong in the second half of the race because right now he does not seem to have the pace, does he? Just can't quite keep up with the cars in front. And um, any setup changes they've made between races maybe not working quite in his favour at this stage, but it could well change as the race goes on. These Master MX-5 Super Cup races have a habit of spicing up quite a lot through the middle and uh, it, it only takes one little incident it only takes Luke Herbert to have a go at Jack Harding and it doesn't quite work and all of a sudden the rest of the field will be right back with them so that's why for the time being I think Herbert is content to just follow Jack Harding and not make any real moves for the lead Tom Roach though he's fighting off all comers isn't he he's got Ben Short Liam Murphy and Brian Chandler queuing up behind him James Blake Baldwin another driver who you might have expected to be in the mix but he's actually dropping back slightly uh, there is Alec Livesley the number nine car Nick Dunn in car number 17 behind him he started 16th, so he's made good progress now up towards the top 10. Uh, ben Short goes up the inside here of Liam Murphy, and Liam, who had just been making good progress, almost loses a place there, but just about fends off the 68 car. They turn their way back through Redgate Corner. In fact, I think he might have just picked up a place there, hasn't he, actually, Liam Murphy? I think he was behind Ben Short the last time we saw them. And now Ben Short has caught Brian Chandler to his outside, which is always uh, focusing the mind. Brian Chandler, another driver who is always entertaining to watch, always on the limit, and will always go for a move if it's on. So, if we threw the checker flag out now, Luke Herbert would be the champion. But we're not going to do that. There's still plenty of racing to go. Make sure you come back after the break to see if Luke can wrap up the title in this race. Hello and welcome back to Donington Park where it's all changed. Tom Roach is ahead of Luke Herbert. This is all really spicing up. There's a bit of damage to the back of Luke Herbert's car as well. This is all taking place, not for the race lead though. The race lead is still held by Jack Harding and James Blake Baldwin has also got ahead of these two championship contenders. But that is what really sparked all of this off. Blake Baldwin ahead of Luke Herbert who is now into the back of Tom Roach who's not best pleased with him for that. He uh, shows his frustration with the hand out of the cockpit but this is gloves off stuff now. Tom Roach
approach is in front of Luke Herbert, and Luke knows that if he loses any more positions, he could see the championship go right down to the last race, and Luke really wants to try and wrap it up in this one so as to avoid all of the stress of a final race decider. However, now he's behind Tom Roach. Tom is dictating his pace, and Tom Roach all of a sudden is not going quite as quickly as he was before. Now, we've seen Tom use these tactics before, and it's perfectly legal, if a bit cheeky. He's getting in free. He's got in front of his big championship rival. He's now defending heavily in the hope that that will hold Luke Herbert up and allow other cars to start challenging him, which is exactly what's happening. Look, Ben Short is there. He's up alongside Luke Herbert as well now. Down the exhibition straight, they fan out almost three wide. Tom Roach on the inside, outside for Ben Short. Up the middle is Luke Herbert. It's the last place he wants to be. He's right in the Hornet's nest now. One contact, one false move, and that could be the end of his championship hopes. Out through the chicane they go. Tom Roach then ahead of Herbert. And again, you can see just hugging the inside of the track, not bothering with the traditional racing line. He doesn't care about letting the cars in front of him escape as long as Herbert starts losing more places. Down into Redgate Corner, Ben Short's up the inside. Can he get past Luke Herbert? No, not quite. There's another little bit of paint traded between the two championship contenders. They're all on the grass behind. Carl Garnett's even joined in the fight now as well. Look, several new contenders getting up there and fighting for top positions. But Ben Short is alongside Herbert now. Now, Herbert, really, he can afford to give this place up rather than fight it too hard. That's exactly what he does. So Ben Short goes through and Luke Herbert knows he can lose a few places. That's not too bad. It's if he starts falling right down the order that it maybe starts to become an issue. Of course, we also have drop scores to take into account. So if he falls quite a long way down, if he loses many more places, then this race could count as a drop score for Luke, which would possibly change things again. Up towards Coppice Corner they go. He's now got Brian Chandler attacking him as they come out onto the exhibition straight. Bit of bodywork there, flapping on the rear of the car. That shouldn't be too big of, a, of an issue there for Luke Herbert. As Roach is now defending, not from his championship rival, but from Ben Short, who has really come on strong this weekend, hasn't he? He's trying to get to the outside of Roach, who himself has a bit of damage. Look, the trim just hanging loose on the front of his car. Possibly linked to uh, the damage on the rear of Herbert's car. We know not, but uh, we do know that... As it stands, right now, this is still enough for Luke Herbert. He would still wrap up the title but it's very tense, and it's certainly a lot more tense than he would like. Penn Short is making life quite tense for Tom Roach as well, though. He's weaving around this way and that as Luke Herbert turns his way through Redgate Corner. He's started to regroup. He's closing back in on the cars in front of him. But does he go on the attack? I doubt it very much. I think that Luke Herbert will be quite content just to sit in line. He's on for a good position here, and he's within a few places of Tom Roach. He doesn't have to beat Tom in this race. It was Tom that really had to go out there and uh, uh, try his best to win the race. Up through Starkey's they go again, and uh, up towards the right-hander at McLean's. This the battle for fourth on the road, by the way. The race leader, as I said, is Jack Harding. Second place is uh, Liam Murphy. Uh, third is Johnny Greensmith. And if that fourth is Blake Baldis. No, it's for fifth place this battle between Tom Roach and the rest. And again, Roach's pace has just dropped off slightly on this lap. He's driving a bit more defensively. And what will this mean for his championship rival, Luke Herbert? Down the back straight they go. The next man behind him is Brian Chandler. And then the much improved Richard Breland having the race weekend of his life here at Donington Park. By far the most competitive we've seen uh, Richard all year. He's right in the thick of the top five battle now. Across the line we go, the last lap board is out, so one more lap to try and decide it. Down towards Redgate. Tom Roach is not likely to gain any more places, but will Luke Herbert lose any? That's the question. There's Jack Harding, he's on for a double race victory, which is the perfect way for him to round out his season. And he'll try and complete the hat-trick, if at all possible, tomorrow uh, in our final race. But it is looking like an even more comfortable race victory actually this time around for Jack Harding possibly helped out by the fact that the, the battling behind has been even more intense in this race but uh, nonetheless he's done a really good job waving away there at the, uh, at the bat markers in front of him just to let them know that he's coming, he's the race leader, they need to get out of his way and indeed they do, that was Duncan Harris in Carnival 26 making life fairly easy for the race leader but they make their way down the back straight look how close it is for second place though look because uh, Liam Murphy is just ahead of Johnny Greensmith now Johnny Greensmith uh, wants that second place but of course Liam Murphy is fighting Jack Harding for third place in the championship so he's going to lose a few points here to Jack but not as many as he might have done so across the line for the second time today comes Jack Harding to become a double race victor here this weekend at Donington Park it's a very comfortable victory for him second goes to Murphy just ahead of Johnny Greensmith in third but what is happening behind is fourth for Blake Baldwin. It is fifth for Tom Roach. And Luke Herbert tries to pull alongside him across the start finish line. They're weaving this way in that. Oh, that almost ended in tears. But I think 
that uh, Luke Herbert, uh, yes, just about hangs on to what will be seventh position, but that's only two points behind Tom Roach, so it's not enough for Tom. It is enough for Luke Herbert. He, provisionally, is the 2017 champion. Jack Harding with the win, Liam Murphy second, Greensmith is third, but the championship goes the way of Luke Herbert, who has led the championship for much of the second half of the season. See a few drivers further back who had uh, a few difficulties in that one. We've got the vast majority of them to the end of the race. Only Tom Collins, who failed to start the race, uh, he's the only non-finisher uh, in the race in the end. So uh, good stuff there from the field. Got most of them through to the end, but a brilliant drive that from Luke Herbert under intense pressure, and he is the provisional champion. Well, Luke, with one race still remaining this weekend, I think we can safely say you are the 2017 BRSCC Mesa Super Cup champion. Yeah, what a great feeling. Um, it's just been a great year, you know. We I took a year out of racing, came back into this because it's just a great championship. Never expected to come out and win it, um, and win it with one race to go by six points. Yeah, I, I, mean, I couldn't have asked anything any better. Um, you know, it's, it's down to my mum, my dad, my girlfriend, uh, my sponsors, SRC Recycling, McEwen Wealth Management, ACC Tires, and Digital Watersports. You know, everyone has participated in this, right from building the car three weeks for the season, transporting it, fixing it. Yeah, it's just been great, absolutely brilliant. It's been a really impressive season. It's been great watching your race, but even more importantly, this weekend, and particularly that last race there, that was really tough going. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried to work with Jack to keep ahead of Tom, but you know, I just didn't have the pace. Um, I might have won the championship, but I, I can tell you, I definitely haven't won the most amount of races. Um, and yeah, I don't think I've been the quickest driver. It's just all about consistency and, and yeah, just, just, just over the moon, really over the moon. This adds quite nicely to your Clio Cup win. Thoughts going forward, where are we going to see you next? Yeah, it's, um, so it's my second crown in the Michelin Clio Cup, um, in the uh, Mazda MSI Super Cup, along with my uh, Michelin Clio Cup. I want to stay at it. You know, I've loved every minute of this year. Um, there's not one bit I haven't enjoyed. You know, the late nights, it's, it's all worth it at the end of the day, the, the long journeys. Um, I think I'm going to stick at this next year and uh, hopefully it's supporting the TCR Championship. So I'm um, really excited to, you know, to show people what we got. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. We'll go and let you enjoy your celebrations. Yeah, I think it's a few times for a few beers tonight, Saturday night. So um, one race tomorrow, we'll have a bit of fun and a few beers tonight. Lovely. Brilliant. Thanks, Thank Luke. You. Cheers. Thanks. Well, as the cars are lining up for the final race of the year in the BRSCC and Mazda MX-5 Super Cup, we know that the main championship has been sealed, but all the attention now is turning to the Masters for drivers aged 45 and over, and the battle is between Gary Townsend and Alex Liversley. It's going to be a really tight battle out there. It's over to Andy to take you through the rest of the grid. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier on, Lloyd, that the, the battling within the Masters part of the race is always pretty exciting, and this race will be no different at all. But at the front of the field, there's nothing to play for now. It's just about the final win of the year. Can Jack Harding make it three from three? Starts from pole position alongside Liam Murphy. Greensmith and Blake Ward in row two. Ben Short, uh, Tom Roach and Ben Short, excuse me, on row three. Luke Herbert and Brian Chandler on the fourth row. Richard Breedland and Carl Garnett are next up. Then Jake Bailey and Nick Dunn. Simon Baldwin and Simon Orange. And then Alec Lipsley and Gary Townsend, those two Masters drivers. Now, that uh, Lloyd made mention of. They line up from the eighth row of the grid together. Richard Wickland and Simon Fleet next in line, ahead of Sam Tatter and Darren Stapleton. And then Jeremy Crook, Clive Powells, William Sharp and Simon Goddard on the 12th row of the grid. We're hoping as well to see right at the back of the grid Tom Collins, who uh, was a non-starter in race two, saw the car being wheeled off the grid prior to the start of the race. Some sort of issue uh, for him, but we're hoping that that car will be at the back of the field and he will be one to watch for because he's uh, got pace to run within the top five or ten. That's a lot of ground to make up if you want to do that. So, grid is being cleared for the final time in 2017. The Master MX-5 Super Cup cars are about to be let loose on the Donington Park circuit. The red lights go out. We're away and racing for the last time this year. Who makes the best start at the front of the grid? It is Jack Harding that will take the lead down towards turn one. Liam Murphy slots through into second position. It looks as though Jack Harding is going to nick that third place in the championship away from Liam as well. So good weekend this has been for, for Jack Harding. And it could prove to be really useful as far as his championship is concerned. Side by side for third then between the outgoing champion, James Blake Baldwin and uh, Johnny Greensmith on board here with Patrick. Patrick Collins further back, and there, Tom Collins, you can see, ducking and diving in the grey and fluorescent yellow car, he's out on the grid, and he's already picking up places as they make their way down through Hollywood and the Craner Curbs, so good to see Tom out there, making a move here up the inside of the, uh, the number 13 car, that's Greg Catton, and Greg will just about chop in across the nose there of uh, Ashley Boyles in uh, car number 53. 
three Starkies. They go towards Schwantz Kerr, but it is Harding from Murphy, from Blake Baldwin, the top three. Then Ben Short is fourth. Then Roach and Herbert, fifth and sixth. Gloves off now. There's no championship to worry about. It's just the battle of the egos now. Who's going to finish ahead in the final race of the season? Then it's uh, Johnny Greensmith, who has had a brilliant start, having started third as they come out onto the uh, exhibition straight and look at the varying lines being taken. James Blake Baldin going one side of Liam Murphy and Ben Short going the other. Liam Murphy absolutely mugged there. Blake Baldin doing to second. Oh, there's a bit of touchy-feely stuff going on. Brian Chandler's going way wide further back, but somehow just about hold my breath for a moment. They will all get through, but that was very close indeed. Uh, Gary Townsend running side by side down the uh, pit straight as well, but uh, they just about keep that clean too, and heading towards Redgate Corner, so it's Harding from Blake Baldwin from, well everyone else in third place really, Tom Roach for the time being occupies the position, but then it's Ben Short, Johnny Greensmith, Liam Murphy, Luke Herbert, and uh, everyone jostling for position here in the early lap, this is typical Master MX-5 Super Cup racing, through Hollywood into the Craner Curves, Murphy all over the curve on the inside of the trap, but it's not going to hold on to that position for him is it though, because through will go Johnny Greensmith, so another place lost for Liam Murphy started on the front row but the start of this final race of the season is not really going his way he's starting to lose quite a bit of ground And welcome back to Donington Park, where Steve Dolman's final race of the season has not ended brilliantly. He's in the wall fairly heavily by the look of it, coming out of the final chicane. So uh, he's actually part way down the pit lane entrance. He's uh, gone that far off the track, but uh, quite substantial damage done to the front of Steve's car. His race is over, but he appears to be absolutely OK. They're going to wheel the car back out of the way. Hopefully no need for a safety car. Uh, this is the battling that's going on, though, at the front of the field, and it's all as lively as you might expect, really. Liam Murphy is trying to bite his way back after getting muscled out in the early laps. He's ahead of Tom Roach now as they work their way down in towards the, uh, the Robert Chicane. They turn their way through the right and the left-hander, out over the kerb, and in some cases over the grass coming out of the corner. You can tell it's the last race of the season because there are several cars with bits of bodywork hanging loose there, a rear bumper hanging loose on James Blake Baldwin's car, for example. Jack Harding still leads the race, by the way. He's uh, pulled quite a substantial gap over the rest of the field, as he did really through the midpoint of both of the first two races. There's Tom Collins, look, the uh, grey and yellow car, moving up another position here alongside uh, Darren Stapleton, and he's later on the brakes into Redgate Corner, and he will go through. So nice move there by Tom Collins, one of the best looking cars on the grid, that one really well turned out. And, um, it's good to see that they've resolved whatever the gremlin was that kept him out of the uh, the second race of the weekend yesterday. So uh, continues to work forward. Bit of a gap now before he catches the next group of cars, but uh, he'll be uh, hell bent here on uh, working his way as far up the order as possible and rounding his season off in style. So back out of the old hairpin, he will go through Starkey's and up towards McLean's. There, in car number 66, is Sam Tatler, not in his usual car, but uh, he is uh, uh, running fairly well, actually, in uh, this race. We saw him having a nice battle with uh, Gary Townsend earlier on. Gary Townsend is on his way towards wrapping up the, uh, the Masters Championship in this final race of the season. Sam Tatler working his way nicely through as well as the race leader comes across the start finish line that is Jack Harding it is Johnny Greensmith in second it's Liam Murphy now in third but that I don't think will be enough for him to hang on to third place in the championship Roach is fourth fifth place then for Blake Baldwin and the battle for sixth is between Ben Short and uh, Luke Herbert who are side by side in towards the first corner over the curbs over the grass there for Roach who came out in Ooh, the battle behind. I think it was Ben Short just about ahead of her, but wasn't it? Yes, it is. The damage to the rear of Blake Baldwin's car seems to be getting worse. That bodywork's becoming looser and looser. The rear bumper has been knocked askew on the rear of the number one car. He'll have to give that number up, though, for next year if uh, Luke Herbert, as it sounds like he wants to, he comes back to uh, try and defend his title. Through Starkey's in towards uh, McLean's again. And uh, up through the deceptively quick right-hander, actually. There's Liam Murphy, car number three, another beautifully turned out car, lots of cars on the grid, uh, really well turned out this year. And uh, Liam Murphy, who's had sporadic pace all year, but just not really been able to put it together. Of course, he's actually one of the most experienced drivers in the field. Oh, that's, uh, that's Ben Short, Ben Short off down at the, uh, the Robert Chicane. And uh, that has lost him lots of positions. He was battling away, wasn't he, with Luke Herbert, but Nick Dunn and Carl Garner will now go past him. As Johnny Greensmith continues here to defend from Liam Murphy. 
looking through Redgate Corner. Ah, car off, and that is the uh, Boyles car, isn't it? Ashley and Stephen Boyles have been sharing that car this weekend, and there's a big ding in the door, which tells me that maybe that car didn't get there all by itself. So the Boyles car out of the race. This car isn't there. This is Gary Townsend, who I said was on his way towards the Masters Championship. It was going down to the last race, but it looks as though he's doing more than enough here to keep that position. He's ahead of Alec Livesley, and... Uh, doing a solid job as he has done all year another one of the most experienced drivers in the field is Gary he turns his way now through McLean's the purple fronted car the Townsend vehicle hire machine turns its way up the uh, hill towards Coppice Corner DPA Technologies on that car for this year as well and uh, Gary Townsend looking good for that uh, that Masters title here at Donington Park this is the battle for second place, still raging, still in the same order, but they've sort of separated themselves from the cars behind now. So Greensmith, Murphy, Roach and Blake Baldwin, the four drivers fighting over the lower steps on the podium. Back out of Redgate Corner, lots of potty work there to the right-hand side of the road as well. Green flags waving to tell them that they can overtake once more now that they're out of the yellow flag zone. You can see the snatch going on behind as they try to recover the Boyles car. Down through the uh, old hairpin they come. Tom Roach trying here to round out his season with a podium finish but it doesn't look like it's going to happen does it as uh, ahead of him this battle is starting to hot up again here between greensmith and murphy liam murphy trying desperately to prise the door open but johnny greensmith a very experienced driver he knows how to defend liam murphy just gives him a bit of a helping hand into coppers corner which i'm sure uh, was uh, done with the best of intentions but maybe not best received there by johnny greensmith he didn't need that little touch right there right then the Clapham North machine there, a series sponsor George Grant just picking up a place at the expense of Greg Catton. This is a battle going on a bit further down the order. His next target in front of him, number 93, is Aldo Ritti, another one of the uh, Masters competitors. Down the hill they will go, in towards the old hairpin, but it just goes to show that the racing, even right down, out, well outside the top 20 this lot of battling, is still just as close as it is at the head of the field. But the, uh, that, uh, another beautifully turned out car, George Grant's car, and uh, he is uh, rounding his season out with another really nice battle. It's uh, Steve Dolman, uh, sorry, no, not, excuse me, it's uh, number 27, Jim Hart, who's just at the head of this little group. It's never a lonely Mazda MX-5 racer in uh, the MX-5 Super Cup always someone to race with wherever you are up or down the order with the exception perhaps of Jack Harding who has cleared off the head of the field and um, is looking good for a hat-trick of race victories which is not easy to do in a championship as competitive as this one and down into the Robert Chicane comes this uh, battle as George Grant tried to find a way past Aldo Ritty there couldn't quite do it and as a result of having to go on the way into the corner, Greg Catton is therefore a bit quicker on the exit of the corner, and so he pulls alongside now, or tries to, on the, the run down towards Redgate Corner. Does he sell him the dummy and throw one up the inside of the last second? No, not quite, so George Grant will stay in front. But for how much longer? Because he's feeling the pressure here from Greg Catton, isn't he? Meanwhile, back towards the front of the field, this fight for second place still raging. Again, they're still in the same order as they have been for much, much of the race, but just inches apart from corner to corner for these four. Johnny Greensmith still keeping Liam Murphy, Tom Roach and James Blake Baldwin at bay across the start finish line. Big dent in the back of Tom Roach's car as well, isn't there, as they hug the white line. Further back, it looks as though that's uh, Richard Breland up ahead of the champion elect uh, Luke Herbert as finally Liam Murphy has found a way up alongside and possibly ahead of uh, uh, the number two car of Johnny Greensmith. He left him just enough room there, I think, as they go down through Hollywood. Greensmith's going to stay with him there. They're wheel to wheel down through the Grainer curves. This is always risky. Oh, out on the dirty side of the road there for uh, Liam Murphy, but it gives him the inside line for the old hairpin. No. No, Greensmith closes the door firmly but fairly, then runs out wide onto the grass and opens it again. So uh, Murphy will still be alongside him as they head towards McLean's. The reason that Greensmith is defending this place so vigorously is because he knows that if he lets uh, Murphy through, there's every chance, as is happening now, that Tom Roach will go through as well. However, Tom Roach gets mugged there by James Blake Baldwin, who gets to his outside, gives uh, Johnny Greensmith a bit of assistance up the hill, and so actually, Greensmith fends them both off. Roach will hold on to fourth ahead of, Green uh, ahead of uh, Blake Baldwin, but it will still be third place by the looks of it then for um, 
and Johnny Greensmith. So uh, good stuff there. Meanwhile, back out of the chicane comes the number 43 car, and Jack Harding is looking good for the race victory here, isn't he? Back across the start finish line, he will go. But what is happening behind? We're on to the final lap of the race. Liam Murphy has got that second place away from uh, Johnny Greensmith, but can he hold on to it through the final lap? Back through Redgate Corner goes the uh, the race leader out over the kerb on the exit of the turn inch perfect as he has been all weekend long he's had quite a bit of defending to do over the course of particularly the first two races in the early stages in this one he's been able to build up the margin pretty much right from the word go he's definitely been the pace setter this weekend we heard even Luke Herbert the champion saying that he couldn't keep up with Jack Harding here at Donington Park and if he can just put together a fully consistent season next year then he has to be one of the real championship favourites, I think, doesn't he, Jack Harding? Because when he's on it, he is almost unbeatable in a field of um, very, very competitive and very, very quick drivers indeed. Of course, Jack in his, the end now of his third season in the championship, so he knows a thing or two about this Master MX-5 Super Cup racing, and he has used all of that experience this weekend to wrap up what looks like being a hat-trick of race wins. Just two more corners to go for Jack uh, Harding, just two more corners remaining in the 2017 season. Back through the chicane, he comes and Jack Harding is going to do it. He takes win three of the day and he will complete the hat trick here at Donington Park and round his season off in style. Brilliant stuff from Jack Harding. Second place is going to go the way of Liam Murphy. Third for Johnny Greensmith. Fourth Tom Roach. Fifth is James Blake Baldwin. But the champion is Luke Herbert. He doesn't care that he's missed the podium in this final race of the year because he's wrapped up the title already. He got back ahead of Richard Breland uh, in the latter stages of that race and it was a really, really good result for him. So the championship goes the way of Luke Herbert, but the final race win of the year goes the way of Jack Harney. He wins by 6.1 seconds over Liam Murphy in second. Greensmith third, then Roach and Blake Baldwin rounding out the top five. Uh, further back, Gary Townsend in 19th place has wrapped up the Masters Championship as well. So good stuff there from Gary Townsend. Another solid finish. We lost a few drivers over the course of the race, though. Alex King was uh, a non-finish there, car number 35. Also, we saw the Boyles car off the road. Brian Chandler didn't finish, nor did Will Sharp. Steve Dolman, Jeremy Crook or Simon Baldwin. So a bit of a race of attrition further back, but racing in front of the field as close and exciting as ever it has been. There's confirmation of the championship standings then. Luke Herbert, 13 points clear of Roach at the end of the year, and third place by two points goes the way of Jack Harding. So those three race victories were just about enough to give him the third place in the championship. Gary Townsend, 2017 MX5 Super Cup Masters Champion. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, very good, yeah, real, real pleased with that. Fantastic. It's been a, a, a terrific battle all season. Uh, coming away from it now with the championship, are you looking forward to next year? Yeah, uh, definitely running, uh, I think, of the TCR package with uh, AK, who ran my car this year. Great, thanks to them as well. Brilliant, brilliant car all year. So, yeah, a lot of momentum to carry forward. Once again, congratulations. It's been great watching your race this season. We look forward to seeing you out there in 2018. Thanks, thanks very much.